What's going on on my YouTube babies? I'm Jacob and welcome to another installment of Celebrating Disney where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney, animated or live action regardless of quality under the main Disney banner. And in this week's video I got an animated review and I'll be taking a look at the 2001 direct-to-video sequel Lady and the Tramp 2 Scamp's Adventure. Lady and Tramp's mischievous pup, Scamp, gets fed up with rules and restrictions imposed on him by life and a family and longs for a wild and free lifestyle. He runs away from home and into the streets where he joins a pack of stray dogs known as the Junkyard Dogs. Lady and the Tramp 2 was released in 2001 and it is yet another direct-to-video Disney sequel, this one being the follow-up to the classic 1955 Lady and the Tramp, a movie that's never been a personal favorite Disney film of mine, but I do enjoy it. I do enjoy the charm and grace of that film. I love the lush, colorful animation of that movie. I love how polished everything is in that movie, and I do love the relationship between Lady and and Tramp. It is a really good movie. It's just not one of my absolute favorites or anything compared to others that they've done over the years. But Lady and the Tramp 2, on the other hand, it's a movie that I did watch as a kid, but just not that much. I was curious to see if it would hold up compared to the first film, and unfortunately, Lady and the Tramp 2 is not a good sequel. The animation is Definitely, you can tell it's a direct-to-video production. It's not the worst cheap animated film Disney Toon had done. It doesn't look as cheap as, like, Return of Jafar or anything like that. I'd put it on the same level as, like, Little Mermaid 2, where there's good aspects of the animation, but you can tell it's made on a cheap budget, and there's definitely some rough patches along the way. There's aspects of the sequel that could have gone somewhere if, I think, better care was put into making a sequel and not be this obvious cash grab. Like, I do like the central core of Scamp's character, even if Scamp is definitely a more annoying lead character than Lady and Tramp ever were. Like, even Tramp in the original film was definitely not whiny and angsty. He was just this grown-up dog who's just living without a leash, and he just does his leisurely thing and just does... Uh, what a stray dog does and here's Scamp just whining and complaining about everything and wants to live in a junkyard and stuff and he's just annoying even though there's aspects I like about his character I like the relationship he has with Angel another stray dog but she's the exact opposite she wants to have a family and be like Lady and Tramp so there's this clash the two characters have but they do have this mutual respect and they do fall in love with each other. And that aspect is definitely rehashed. It's like a role reversal of Lady and the Tramp pretty much. But it does follow the same story where two polar opposite dogs end up falling in love with one another. They even go to Tony's restaurant and have the spaghetti dinner. But the problem with this sequel is it does not have the same charm as the first film. Like, Lady and Tramp are sidelined in this movie, especially Lady. Like, she does hardly anything in this movie. She just stays at home while Tramp goes off to find find his son. And even Tramp, I don't care as much in this movie. Like, the voice, even though I respect Jeff Bennett as a voice actor, his voice does not match the Tramp at all, especially considering the good voice talent we saw in the original Lady and the Tramp. Scamp comes off as a little too hard-nosed in this sequel, and I was kind of shocked by that. You'd think he'd be a little more kinder and honest to his son and give him life lessons about why he left, uh, why he doesn't like that lifestyle anymore, and why he gave it up to be with the dog that he loves. But no, he's just hard on his son, and it was just really weird. And He was just too hard on his son and just didn't really care to try to help him out and not make the same mistakes that he did. And it was just kind of hard getting into that relationship. And also, they, there we have this, I guess, antagonist dog named Buster who runs the junkyard dogs. And they set up this history between Buster and Tramp that really confused me because it set up that Tramp actually trained Buster in the world of the junkyard dogs. 
and they had a fallout because Tramp decided to be with Lady instead, but they didn't set up this history in the first movie, and the first movie established that the Tramp was a loner, so I don't know where Disney was coming up with this. It was a really pathetic retcon to try to make a continuation of things that I didn't really care about seeing. Like, I'll just stick to the first movie, thank you. I like the first movie's depiction of Tramp more so than this movie's depiction of Tramp, where he just hard-nosed and hard to relate to. That was a weird direction to go for this movie. The songs in this movie, I don't like any of them. They're so forgettable. They don't stick the landing. They don't ring the same emotions as the songs in the first movie. There's aspects of this movie that had potential, like I think Scamp and Angel's relationship, there's sweet elements to it, even though there is weird aspects to it, like Buster, another thing I forgot about Buster, he has a crush on Angel, but Angel I assume was the same age as Scamp, and they're pretty much like puppy dogs pretty much, and Buster is about the same age as Tramp, so that's a bit creepy, so why would Buster be in love with a little girl dog. That's just kind of wrong on Disney's part. <laughs> another and another thing I do kind of like about this movie, the dog catcher. There's sequences with the dog catcher that are pretty fun. Like, clearly, they animated the dog catcher character and modeled him after Don Knotts. And even the voice actor does a pretty good Don Knotts impression. So someone who's a fan of Don Knotts, particularly his Barney Fife role on the Andy Griffith show. I thought that was a fun little tribute to a great comedic actor. So those sequences were probably the most fun. I did kind of enjoy a running gag where this older woman keeps losing her wig because of some of the chase and slapsticky sequences in the film. So those sequences aren't too bad. And I don't think this is the worst direct-to-video sequel I've come across. Like, I don't think it's as bad or insufferable or Bill's Magical World or The Return of Jafar. I think there's aspects in this that could have worked. I think if they fleshed Scamp and Angel's relationship more. I think if they gave Lady and Tramp more to do in this movie. I think if they tweaked the musical numbers or ditched them entirely improved the animation, and made the film with the same care and grace that the original had back in 1955. I think Lady and a Tramp 2 would be a really strong sequel, but nope. It's made by the direct-to-video division. The animation's not as strong. The music is definitely off. The characters are a little out of character, and the movie just fell flat at the end of the day. It's not a sequel that I personally recommend. It's definitely one of the weaker sequels or cheapquels if you will in Disney Toons run and I don't recommend this film personally you can check it out on Disney Plus if you're interested you can check it out for curiosity's sake but I don't think it lives up to the first lady and the tramp in any way and I think you can easily skip this one personally so at the end of the day I'm going to give lady and the tramp 2 a 2 out of 5 stars and on the 100 point scale it's getting a 35 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure, as part of my Celebrating Disney series, where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney, anime, and their live action, regardless of quality, under the main Disney banner. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a fan of Disney like I am, feel free to click the link in the description below for a playlist where you can check out all the Celebrating Disney reviews I've done on the channel, all my animated reviews, all my live action reviews. There's definitely a lot you can check out, so feel free to click that link in the description below to catch up on my past videos. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of future Celebrating Disney videos. If you're new to this series, each week I alternate between animated and live action reviews. My animated reviews are done in chronological order, from the theatrical animated classics to the direct-to-video sequels, along with Pixar. My live action reviews are in no particular order. They are in freestyle, and I leave room for requests. If there's any live action film or franchises you'd like me to tackle in this series to come, feel free to share your requests in the comments below. Also, if you follow me on Twitter, I do occasionally leave up polls where you can help vote and select feature live action films in the Celebrating Disney series. Join me next week in this series as I'll be doing a live action review, continuing on in my series of Halloween Town reviews with my review of the third Halloween Town film, Halloween Town High. Be on the lookout for that video coming next week. But if you've seen Lady and the Tramp 2, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I'll also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!